Good evening and welcome to my second video in the Deep Amp Editing Parameters in Helix. Tonight we're going to look at Hum and Ripple. Um, these two controls are very closely related. Um, they both uh, affect the power supply section of the amplifier uh, and how it interacts with the power tubes. Um, what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be taking a look at, a, at a spectrum analysis. We're going to look at the spectrum analyzer profiles of three different amplifiers uh, and we're going to change those controls and see how it changes the behavior of the amplifier. Uh, we're also going to add a test tone to those three amplifiers and see how the amplifier behaves in the presence of a test tone and we're going to see things like ghost notes and other things that appear as we change those controls. Um, in my next video we're going to get a little deeper and we're going to look at it with an oscilloscope um, but I don't want the videos to get too long so we're going to just break this into two separate parts. So here we go. Okay, good evening. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at three different amplifiers and the first one I'm going to pick is the Stone Age 185. I picked these three amplifiers because they do a pretty good job showing some different characteristics. Some of them you're going to really see in this video, some of them not until the next video when we look at it with the oscilloscope will you really see the differences. But we're going to start with the Stone Age 185. Now what I have right here is everything's at factory settings except for the Hull and Ripple which I have turned all the way off. And what we're looking at here on my oscilloscope is the noise floor of the amplifier. Now what we see is even with the hum and ripple all the way down, we see 60 cycles, 60 hertz, okay? Then we see it's harmonics. Second harmonic one, 120, third harmonic at 180, 240, 300, down the line. So this is the amp responding to an input signal of 60 hertz. There's always a little ripple, always a little hum on this, and then it's producing harmonics. It's amplifying those harmonics, and that's what amplifiers do. Um, so this is the amp in a steady state with the hum and ripple all the way off. Now we're going to take the hum and we're going to bring it all the way up. See what happens. Okay, now with the hum all the way up, you can see the spike at 60 cycles boosted up a lot. And these other ones got a little bit louder, but not crazy. The one that shows usually any difference, I'm not sure if it does here or not, watch that 300 hertz. Yeah, so 300 hertz comes up a lot, so the, the um, fifth harmonic comes up uh, a little bit more. Now we're going to bring up Ripple and watch what happens to bring up the Ripple. All right, now we have a lot of harmonics going on and some of them are oscillating, particularly the third and fifth harmonics um, are oscillating quite a bit. A lot of the other ones are too, but they're not nearly as loud. Um, so this is with the hum and ripple all the way up. Now the amp obviously is behaving differently than with them off. Here's with them off. And here's with them all the way up. So there's a big difference. All right. Um, in a minute, we're gonna, I'm going to run through the three amps first. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add some test tones to them and see how they behave with that. So um, next amp we're going to look at is the... Fender Twin, and we'll take SAG and, oh, not SAG, oh, sorry, oops, go back there, okay, turn Hum and Ripple all the way off, okay, here we are, okay, similar, we have our 60 cycles, okay, 180, 240, well, 120, 180, 240, yada, 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 300 down the line, our, our harmonics, bring up Hum, the 60 cycles gets louder, we see all of our harmonics get a little bit louder, okay, um, not a lot of change. Let's take that ripple and let's bring that ripple up. There we go. Now, this is a Class A single-ended amplifier. Class A single-ended amplifiers tend to reject odd order harmonics. That's why you see the third and the fifth and the seventh harmonic are all suppressed. All right, so you got 180 is suppressed. 300 is suppressed, 420 are all suppressed. And they're also oscillating some, and that's because Ripple and the 60 cycle hum, they're not exactly in phase. They're they're slightly out. They're you know not they're not at 60 and 180. Um, I mean at 120. They're I'll show you that when we get to the oscilloscope. They're a little bit different. So as the two waves roll over each other, basically fold over each other, you get oscillations at certain harmonics. Now let's take a look at the Vox. Hum, ripple off. Okay, again, similar. Got your harmonics, you got your 60 cycles. Bring up our hum. 
My 60 cycles gets louder, no surprise there. Now, let's add Ripple and see what happens to this amp. Okay. It's sort of the opposite of a champ, okay? Our third and fifth harmonics get much louder than our even order harmonics. So this amp sort of works in reverse. It rejects the even order harmonics and reproduces the odd order harmonics um, more efficiently. So now, we're going to take the hum and ripple and we're going to turn them off. And I'm going to add a test tone. We're going to add a 200 hertz test tone. Let's see how the amp behaves. Okay, here we go. Here's our test tone. Now we still have our 60, our 120, our 180, our 240, our 300. Okay, and here's 200, 400, 600. These are the harmonics of the 200 hertz test tone. So here's our third order harmonic is louder, our fifth order harmonic is louder, our seventh order harmonic is louder. Um, so these are the harmonics that we see from our test tone, and these are the harmonics that are existing in the power supply from the 60 cycles. All right, let's bring up our hum and our ripple. Let's bring them all the way up, and look at this. Okay, here's our test tone at 200. Here's our 60 cycles. We know about that. Now, I've got one at 38. I've got one at 80. I've got one... Well, here's our 120, we know about that. Here's our 180, okay. Here's our 240 down here, right? 240, okay. What's this one at? That one's at 219. So there's a, these are what are called ghost notes. Um, ghost notes are strange harmonics that are produced below the fundamental frequency of the pitch you're introducing. So if I turn, interestingly now, if I just turn this off, they all go away. We're back to our third, our, our third and our fifth and our seventh harmonic being loud and the rest of the power supply, even order harmonics of the power supply coming through here are much quieter. But again, add frequency to it and it behaves totally differently. And that's because the hum and ripple are all the way up. And if I bring this back down to, to, to the middle, I think which is about where factory was, again, they're still there but they're quieter, those ghost notes. And bring ripple down even more, declines more, bring hum down even more, and it continues to decline. So those are what are called ghost notes. If we take a look at the ghost notes that are produced in the tweed, um, you know, in the tweed, in the uh, Fender Twin, we'll take hum and ripple all the way off. Okay, okay we have our, our 60, our 120, our normal, our normal, um, Harmonics produced off of our 60 cycle power, all right, and then we have our input frequency at 200, and then we have 400, our first harmonic, and then 600, and then uh, 800 is down here, I guess. I mean, they get small, but let's add some 60 cycles, and let's add some ripple, and look at all the ghost notes. Again, here's our 60 right here. But I've got the 38, I've got 80, I've got, my, this is my 120, this is like 140, 142, and this is, this is my 180. So again, these are all ghost notes that are unrelated to anything other than the power supply oscillation. Um, they really don't have anything to do with 200 hertz, and they really don't have anything to do with 60 cycles. Um, that's why they call them ghost notes, and they're like, they're out of tune. <laughs> that's why part of the way the amps sound. Okay, again, same thing here. We're going to look at the uh, Stoney's 185. Here's the amp in the presence of the 200 hertz test tone. Again, first harmonic, 200, 400, um, 600, 800, 1000, and then just right on down the line. These are all your harmonics. These are your power supply harmonics down here. Now let's add hum and ripple. And again, here we go with the ghost notes. And, they, and here they're, they're actually oscillating. This 80 hertz one is oscillating wildly. You got 40 hertz, there's your 60 hertz power. So this is all ghost notes. Okay, so that was a quick walkthrough looking at a spectrum analyzer uh, and three different amps with three very different types of power sections. Um, and we saw how the power sections perform normally uh, and then how they perform differently in the presence of a test tone with the hum and ripple set very high. Normally you wouldn't set them there, 
and this was basically done for, for demonstration purposes, um, but we can see how each of the different types of power sections behave differently with the hum and ripple um, and how they produce different types of harmonics. Um, those ghost notes that I was getting change if I put a different frequency. So in other words, I was at 200 hertz, so I got a ghost note at 80 and one at 38 or whatever. If I put a 400 test tone, 400 hertz test tone, I get different ghost notes again. Um, and they're, they are related to that fundamental frequency, but not musically, so to speak. They're mathematically related. Um, and honestly, I'm not quite sure how to calculate them. A little more fiddling and I'll probably figure it out. But um, I just wanted to get this video out because I knew people wanted to see this. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting stuff. Um, there's some really cool resources on the web. Um, if you go to Helix Help um, and you click on the AMP section and there's a AMP common setting parameters tips thing, um, there's a link to an article that was done. Um, a friend of mine turned me on to it from the Facebook group. Uh, Project Wildcat, and they took a Fender Bassman and they created a power supply that had zero ripple and tested it and proved that it had zero ripple and then played the amp and I guess the amp was horrible you know I don't know how they measured like it's they said it had no dynamics and no feel and that all the great things that were great about the amp went away you know I don't know how they measured that um, just the articles basically about how they straightened out the power supply um, so it's an interesting thing you know ultimately at the end of the day these amplifiers uh, these models um, the reason they're great is because they're a conglomeration of little things um, you know the, the the paintings uh, the sum of all the pieces you know and so you know as much as we, you know we don't dime the ripple and dime the hum controls and we keep them lower and they at lower levels they, they do produce ghost notes and they do produce different oscillations um, but they do it at a lower level it still affects the overall tone of the amp uh, in the next video we're going to take a look at um, an oscilloscope and we're going to look at hum and ripple on an oscilloscope and how they interact with each other and I'm going to be able to show some of those oscillations uh, and show how different types of waves ride on top of one another. These are things your amp does every day. Another important thing to consider um, is when you play a note, just even if it's an open E, um, you're going to get the open E and then you're going to get all the harmonics of the E. The string doesn't just ring the open E, it rings you know the E, you know one, you know eighty-two, and then one sixty-four, and right up the line, and all of those harmonics. So the amp doesn't receive just a single input signal like we gave it here. It receives a lot of inf input signals, and it reproduces all of those and all of those harmonics, and it does it all simultaneously. So those ghost notes that you hear are much more widespread throughout the spectrum of the amplifier. Um, it's not just four ghost notes. It's all the harmonics and all the ghost notes of all of the harmonics and that's why they get really freaky deaky you know and that's why you start to see all those lines coming up and like I said in the next video we're gonna look at the uh, at the oscilloscope and we're gonna start to see why we get the oscillations that we get and why those lines are going up and down and again this all kind of seems to become this big amalgamation of um, of information that we expect from a real amplifier and that is modeled in these these uh, models in the helix um, so it's pretty cool anyway I hope that was informative stuff I'll include the link to that amp um, to that helix help article down below uh, I'm also going to include a link to a, a page called Icon amps they have a like a tech info section that's fantastic it's got a great resource for reading about tube amps and how they work and class A versus class A B and cathode biased and all that stuff um, the reason those amps were different, like the Vox is a cathode biased amplifier, uh, a Champ is a class AB amplifier, push pull amplifier, uh, not a Champ, a, a Champ is a class A single end amplifier, and the, the Stone Age 185 is a push pull amplifier, class AB, they're both 6 v6s. Uh, and all those power supplies, just, they, they all have their own characteristics. I can literally go through all the amps in Helix, and they all behave differently with Ripple. Like, it's really hard to get any Ripple out of. Um, a Fender Twin Reverb, the big, you know, the big tons of clean headroom Fender Twin. 
it's very hard to get ripple out of that to see it on an oscilloscope you can get some of the behaviors out of it but not necessarily be able to see it and when we get to the oscilloscope i'll show you all that at any rate that's it for tonight i hope you enjoyed this video um, and I will be back with you in a few days with um, the oscilloscope video. Uh, I have a little more research to do on it, and um, we'll go from there. Hope you learned something. Hope this was cool. If you liked it, press like and subscribe. Uh, and that's it for now. Have a good evening.